all to enter the land of dawn for Team Philippines versus Indonesia on the opening match of day number two. We're going to dive straight into the land of dawn, ladies and gentlemen, for Indonesia versus Philippines. Wow, honestly, the early game is going to be so, so important here because at any moment, right, any one of these teams, they can actually get an advantage. And if they do, both Indonesia and Philippines are notorious for taking that kind of lead and actually using it as efficiently as possible and punishing every single mistake. And if they do that, they can set the tone for the mid to late game all the way since as early as the second or third minute. You can see in the start here, both teams wanting to go for just a normal start, not really going for anything too aggressive early on. They both just want to clear their camps, get to a point where they can finally actually deal out some damage, the burst, and obviously use those power spikes well. Here, Arashi, with the pathing of both of the junglers, it does feel like they want to play towards the side laners a little bit early as well. We've also seen many times that Del Rosario on the utility junglers really likes to go and clear that gold lane to help the Beatrix out. Well, the early game is going to be so much pressure, so much, so many things for the roamers to do, right? Because in the early game, uh, it's always about how the roamers can facilitate. Will they move towards the gold lane? Will they move towards the mid lane? You know, once you get one of your laners ahead, that will allow you to use that lane as the basis to make plays happen. Well, here it is once again, two minutes in, and it's going to be Team Philippines who has a bit more pressure around a turtle with the Black Dragon form being popped in. It's still going to be Del Rosario oh. who secures the retribution on the turtle. Divine Judgment going to be popped in towards Potapop, but it's not going to work. That is a very, very tanky hero. And you can see that despite all the burst damage being used by the Indonesian team, you do see that the Lapu Lapu, man, is just so, so tanky. And we've seen this from Malaysia yesterday, actually. Four Maze able to 1v4. Maybe we'll see a similar play play out for the Philippines in the bottom side. Two minutes in, it's already a neutral objective secure for Team Philippines. And now they're going to look again just to play it calmly, play it efficiently. And that's exactly what they need to do. They do not need to go for anything too aggressive here when they have the lead. For the Indonesians, they need to make sure that they abuse that cult altar as much as possible. They do have the Black Dragon form as well, so those objective takes are going to be very much in their favor only if they are able to actually uh, get an advantage and actually capitalize on the fact that they have a bit more crowd control and they have a lot more utility that they can actually abuse to force the Philippines into a tough spot. But of course, if they do, go too aggressively, there is a Lapu-Lapu, there is a Valentina, so a lot of counter-engage potential from the side of the Philippines. Well, here it is, another engage coming in, and that's going to be Dreams taken really low. First blood over to Philippines as they're looking for more. That's the IMU doing work, stealing away to the Divine Judgment and picking up another for Imam in the mid lane. That is what you have to be aware of, man. If you don't want to deal with the engage, you can engage on the engager, and that is exactly what the Philippines have done. They take out dreams, and they hunt for stragglers afterwards. They have the tempo in the game right now, and if you look at the side lanes, that is where the action will start building up. Because with pressure in all the lanes from the Philippines, they're going to try and cut into the jungle and cut off members of Indonesia from their own backup. I just really like how Soriano is taking this lane, is uh, approaching this lane, this matchup, right? Up against the Melissa, he knows exactly that he is going to lose out if he goes for these trades, if he goes for these 1v1 duels. So what he does is he swaps over to the Bennett just to clear out the waves, rotates over to help this team, and simultaneously gets even more gold because they're trying their best to actually funnel as much towards Soriano. And if Soriano gets a bit more items, he can very easily start poking down members from the side of the Indonesians because there's only one real front uh, tank, tanky frontline member in Psychots. And if he is too low to for, for a fight, it's going to be very difficult for the Indonesians to try and contest any kind of objective. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here, Villa Luna in the gold lane. They're looking for some plays here up in the gold lane. Hmm. The gold lane for sure has been the target for a lot of players, but here we go, Nibru's Passion! Soriano picking up a kill, and now Dreams is going to be very, very low. Gets out just 
barely here, but you can already see the cut coming in from Del Rosario over the top side. Oh. There's gonna be the flickers over under the tier two. Dreams not using flicker just yet. Very wise to save that flicker as he did have a bit of backup. Oof. As we called it out, man, the side lanes. There you go. Indonesia just a bit too late, a bit too behind when it comes to that pressure. And the Philippines absolutely capitalize and punish anybody who is too... Who doesn't want to back away from their first turret. And they have taken the first structure, the first objective. And with that, they will have a lot more areas on the map to make plays around. And they do have a lot of very good catch. This is it, Arashi. This is the meta that we have been mentioning about. The ultimate bonding experience where they group up as five into the mid lane. They start to just put in a lot of mid pressure so that they can actually have more room to play in the side waves. Four members grouping up and always just dap a dap in that XP lane solo. Villa Luna right now, though, has completed that reading armor. That item reduces damage when it comes to multiple instances of damage. So against a Faramis, against uh -oh. Ka a Kaja or the Gushin, it's going to be very good. But look at that. Pick potential over to Del Rosario. Oh. He comes in using so much damage with Appraiser's Wrath, taking back a whole lot of HP and outplaying the situation, turning it completely around. It's looking bad for Indonesia as that's going to be the third turtle over to Philippines with no trades on the board, no turrets, no kills so far. They put a trigger on that play with the objective to try and force the Philippines' hand, but instead the Philippines has all the answers. A tanky front line, two tanky front, front lines in fact, and a lot of utility to ensure that the, their member stays alive and afterwards they can just chase and take out members of Indonesia one by one. And even then, they go for the pressure. And it seems like the Indonesians, they have to try and make a huge play happen or a massive pickoff. But it's going to be very difficult because the positioning from the Philippines is way too good. The setup, the positioning, and the trigger instantly onto Psychots. Picking him up, baiting Indonesia over to that bottom side to pick up a free turret and two free kills in the process. It does feel like so far in this game, the Philippines are a step, maybe even two steps ahead of Team Indonesia as Dream's gonna get knocked up. Imam looking for that follow-up. Just to zone Indonesia away from the tier two as they look to start sieging down on every single turret. The damage difference right now from both teams is just so difficult to deal with. We mentioned how there's only one real frontline on the side of Indonesia and look at what happens to him in a big fight. He gets taken out. The cult altar is so non-existent. The Philippines are able to just burst through it and go on with their day. Soriano right now with the Malefic Roar completed. That is a lot of penetration on top of the already insane amount of damage and burst that the Beaches can bring to the table. This is what Philippines loves to do when they're ahead, right? They use the distraction that is Dapadop, that's who's practically currently unkillable on that Lapu Lapu. Mm -hmm. he, they use him as a distraction in the side lane solo, picking up a turret. Meanwhile, they set up on the other side. Usually, they like to play on the opposite side and use the conceal to catch the enemies off guard. But there, you can see again a curveball thrown over to Indonesia, or maybe Indonesia have done that res their research onto how Philippines likes to play with the lead. They take another step ahead, and they think two steps ahead of Indonesia. Right now, again, oh. it's going to be Divine Judgment coming in, but it's all onto the frontliners with a lot of the resources burnt out. It's going to be oh. who jumps in and finishes off Soriano in the back lines, splitting Philippines in two. Imam now flickering out, getting to safety, but all that was for the Lord. It's a two for one in the end. Two kills over to Indonesia for a Lord take. Arashi, who's it worth for? Oof, I think considering the fact that the Philippines are so ahead and they are focusing now more than ever on taking all those structures away from Indonesia, I think the Lord will be very, very beneficial. Unfortunately, they lose their gold leaner as well, which is not ideal. But if you take a look at the items right here, he is on 7,300 gold. As we mentioned, BOD and straight to a Malefic Roar, ensuring that anyone getting caught in his ultimates will get absolutely decimated. What's another thing that I want to mention is the fact that the kill, two kills that Indonesia picked up earlier was onto two members with no bounty. There was no shutdown there. So even though they were able, Indonesia were able to find some kills, it was just normal gold. It wasn't the added gold that we usually see. And they get the Lord for that. So if it was a shutdown, I would actually say that Indonesia definitely came out on top in terms of value. Mm -hmm. But here, Taz might actually be caught, Oof. forced to use that ultimate 
defensively to get out. And everyone is from the Philippines is available because the death timers are very, very short and they are going for a siege here where Indonesia don't have a lot of tools to try and counter the poke damage. Slowly but surely, the Philippines is chipping away at the structures and at the EHP bars of the Indonesian players. It's a good defense by Indonesia. They're able to minimize their losses here, only losing that tier two in the mid lane for now. But Brands is gonna be zoned away from that mid lane. Philippines looking for that, but look at Psychots with the Petrify! He's able to find two on the flanks! Whoa. Psychots absolutely massive as his engage has started a war that Indonesia can finally win here in this game. Three for zero trade as Indonesia look to climb, to crawl themselves back in this game. Blink and you'll miss it. An engage that gave way for Indonesia to take three kills for a trade of none. And along with that, Taz is able to secure the purple buff from the side of the Philippines as well. So now they have a momentum, they have recovered a bit of that gold difference, only 2k right now. But the Philippines, they are still in the lead and they are no stranger to these late game situations. Dreams opening up the map just a bit, going to be chunked down by Del Rosario, but he is going to be able to back off without having anything taken away. Honestly, looking at it right now, Rashi, Indonesia, their main win condition, we thought it would be Brands on that Melissa. We thought it was going to be the Gushin uh, on the hands of Taz, but it's actually Psychots, the man that has been doubted so many times by everyone. By the public. I mean, this man has had a very lackluster season uh, in his last performance. That was a performance in the last season, actually, <laughs> rather. But here, knowing that Indonesia are relying very, very heavily on a very reliable engage. His Yuzong has been critical, but after two engages, real Philippines fall for the same trick twice. Divine Judgment over the Dreams. That's gonna be the frontliner taken out. That's gonna be that. Oh my god, so much damage onto the Lapu. Fortunately, won't be enough though. And now Indonesia, they're actually backing away and it will be waiting for the Lord take. And Philippines, they are so, so good at the Lord dance going back and forth, waiting for their opponents to make a mistake, and with such a long-range basic attack on their Beatrix, they can do better. That's what they were waiting for. The Black Dragon form now baited oh! out. Psychos with a Petrify onto Soriano, who's forced to flick around, but Psychos jumps in. 1v4, soaking in all the damage and sustaining back up. Top it up, gonna be taken down by Ooh. Brands, and that's another kill over to Indonesia who were able to play with the death timers of dreams really well with them now respawning they've taken back the lead if they actually can secure the Lord which they should be able to free Lord over to Indonesia they're not stopping just yet though conceal play from Indonesia they back off back off for now as the orange buff will be contested as well so the Philippines are now on the back foot and if you look at the composition in a way, right, in the big team fights, there's a lot more DPS and utility available in the hands of the Indonesians. After that play, they go for the purple buff as well, and the Philippines have a huge problem on their hands. The Black Dragon form lasts for way too long. The Guiding Wind was used to try and buy some dis uh, make some distance, buy some more time, but it was not enough. The Philippines must come up with a different solution, a different answer. A momentum shift in the 13th minute of the game. And now it's Philippines who have their backs against the wall with the Enhanced Lord marching in that top lane. Evo's legends here, Team Indonesia, are going to look to try to siege them down. Psychots once again with a Black Dragon form as Del Rosario tries his best to keep Psychots at bay. The damage comes through once again for the siege to take place, but that's going to be Dabadab who jumps in with the Bravest Fighter. But it's going to be a good disengage from Indonesia, backing off knowing that they have found some value. They've taken every single tier 2 except for the bottom lane. And look at how Psychos is playing around with his Petrify, man. He goes in for the Black Dragon form, but he doesn't always use that Petrify. And when you think about it, the Petrify is what makes these engages so, so dangerous. It guarantees the Furious Dive knockup, and that is what allows Indonesia to just be a lot more elusive. And as we talked about it earlier, this is what is so dangerous. They can faint around act like they're about to engage a fight and then back away, the Philippines need to identify the right moment and then adjust accordingly. Do they want to go and fight after the Black Dragon form is down or do they want to just stall? Villa Luna with that circling eagle over the branch, but it's going to be baited in with the cold ultra placed as well. Soriano targeted by the flanks, and that's going to be Taz who picks up the Beatrix. Soriano taken down, Brands in the midst of it all, still life stealing with his fighter! Brands! Oh! It's 
massive. He is an absolute beast as he wins the battle for Indonesia. It's a 4-0 trade. Indonesia with a comeback here with the tides turned completely. Only Villaluna left to defend with a mini wave crashing in. Villaluna gonna be brought back by the Shadow Stampede. Villaluna outside of the base and Indonesia with the Divine Judgment onto Villaluna will go for the base to pick up the first game of the series. Oh my god, what an upset!